Infections acquired in hospitals can have serious consequences for patients and lengthen the amount of time they stay in hospital. In the worst cases, these microbes, whether person-to-person -person spread, airborne, waterborne or foodborne, can cause permanent disability or death. Some may think infection control is only relevant for clinicians, nurses and healthcare assistants. In fact, all healthcare workers, including porters, domestic assistants, ward clerks and catering staff, have a part to play in reducing the risk of infection. The way you interact with your work environment and those to whom care is provided can directly affect whether microbes that cause infections are left to multiply freely or pass unchecked from one person to another. This video aims to help you understand what you can do to reduce the risk of infections spreading. Infections are caused by microbes, commonly called germs or bugs. Microbes live everywhere around us, and some are very useful, for example, in making bread, cheese and beer. However, some microbes cause disease in humans. These are called pathogens because they always cause illness. Others are called opportunists as they cause infections in people whose immune systems aren't working properly. People come to hospital for very different reasons. Some people need an operation or medical investigation. Others are very ill and are admitted to intensive care. Some are at greater risk of acquiring an infection than others, either because they are very young or elderly, or are simply prone to infection due to their condition. 9% of patients acquire an infection during their stay in hospital, many of whom are difficult to treat due to the emergence of antibiotic-resistant organisms. In hospital, microbes hitch rides on your hands and the equipment you use for patients. A seemingly harmless act, such as picking your pen up from the floor, then adjusting a patient's oxygen mask, will increase the risk of the patient acquiring an infection. The act of these microbes passing from the carrier, you or equipment, to another person is known as cross-infection. To prevent cross-infection, such microbes can be removed by simple measures such as washing your hands and making sure that equipment is cleaned before patient use. You have a central part to play in disrupting the cycle of infection. Personal and environmental factors all contribute to effective infection control practices, often called standard precautions. They include personal, effective hand hygiene, that's decontaminating your hands at the right time in the right way. And wearing personal protective clothing. Environment. Effective cleaning. Correct handling of used linen. Safe handling and disposal of sharps and clinical waste. Think and act clean self and clean environment at all times. Let's look more closely at how you can put this into practice, looking at the personal aspects first. 